what you can do and what we can do to deal with the very real problem of corporations fleeing um, the jurisdiction of the United States in order to be able to operate above the law and do really horrible things overseas. And I know you guys have been hearing all day today about just how bad these corporations are in this country and how they're getting away, and we all know what they're doing in this country. But imagine these same corporations going to countries like Burma and Nigeria and Peru, and one of the main reasons they're going is because they know it's a free-for-all where they can operate with absolute impunity. Or so they thought until Earth Rights came around and decided to show them something different. Um, but Earth Rights deals with the very real problem of economic, economic globalizations and the fact that the legal system has not caught up with the reality of economic globalization. International law was set up to deal primarily with nation states, with countries, with governments, and individuals like you and I or corporations, private individuals are subject to private law, to the law of the land in which they operate. So when I graduated from law school and spent a couple of years on the Thai-Burma border and spoke to people who were fleeing from Burma, fleeing from the incredibly repressive military dictatorship that rules there, and not just fleeing from the military and sort of the very typical abuses of that military, slave labor, torture, extrajudicial killing, rape, but fleeing from those same abuses committed by the military on behalf of an American oil company, Unical, who had gone into a contract with the Burmese military, had actually hired this very notorious military regime to provide security for their pipeline, their gas pipeline in Burma. And people were fleeing from Burma, and I was talking to them, and they were talking about how they had done forced labor at gunpoint, taken from their villages to build bridges, roads, helicopter landing pads, so that the people from California, from Unical's headquarters, could fly in and safely see their work, see their gas pipeline. And at that time, this was in 1995, and I was talking to this person from Burma who said, look, this is an American company. You guys don't have slavery in America anymore, right? <laughs> well, that's a longer conversation, but at least on the face of it, no. But the fact is that this was an American company that was using slave labor in Burma. And they said, this is illegal. Can't you do anything about it? And I said, well, we must be able to sue. And lo and behold, I came back to the United States and did the research, and no, we couldn't sue. Unical had found a loophole. In fact, all the companies had found a loophole which said, you are subject only to the law of the land in which you are operating. And if you are committing human rights abuses, if you're not a government, you can't be held accountable. So yeah, we could sue Unical in Burma, but there is no legal system in Burma. And that's precisely what companies like Unical know when they go overseas and feel absolutely free to be engaged in slave labor, rape, and torture. So I told this person, actually, we can't sue. And he said, well, then, would it be legal if we were to blow it up? And I was like, hmm, blowing up gas pipelines. You might get what you want, but is it legal? I don't think so. So these two situations, Unical going overseas, you can't do anything to hold them accountable because they're in Burma. And then people on the ground feeling like the only tool they have in their toolbox to deal with slavery and rape and torture by a corporation is blowing stuff up. It sounds familiar, right? And I thought, we've got to be able to do anything, do something. And so did some research. We put together a case against Unical. We thought to ourselves, OK, everyone says we can't do it. Rob, I don't remember you saying we couldn't you. do it. but. <laughs> he probably said something really nice, like, I'm too busy. I can't, see, I can't see Unical instead of laughing at me. But lots of people did laugh at us. They told us we were crazy. You can't sue a corporation for human rights abuses that happened overseas. And we said, well, you're just saying that because no one ever has. We sued Unical. It became the first case 
in the United States and actually in the world in which a court granted jurisdiction over a corporation for human rights abuses that happened overseas. This was a landmark case and it changed US law. Um, and eventually, after almost 10 years of litigation in 2005, Unical became the first corporation outside of the Holocaust context to pay money, and a lot of it, for the human rights abuses that they inflicted on my clients and on the Burmese people of Burma associated. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so anyway, we have this law in the United States called the Alien Tort Claims Act. And ironically, given the state of this country and our, and our government's attitude to international law and our responsibilities under it, the United States is currently the only court system in the world that has a law in which you can sue a corporation for what they do overseas. So, when you're feeling really down in the dumps about our country and our, our attitude towards international law and human rights, just remember, the Alien Tort Claims Act is one of a kind, it's the only one in the world, and the Bush administration and their friends are doing everything they can to get rid of this law. And they failed on the Hill so far, they failed at the Supreme Court, they went all the way to the Supreme Court in 2004 and lost, um, but they're still trying today to get rid of the Alien Tort Claims Act and chip away at its power to give people like our clients, these 11 villagers from the most rural area in Burma, the opportunity to stand up, challenge a major multinational oil company on their home turf in the United States and win. So we have to be vigilant, we have to protect this law, you need to protect this law and know what it is and understand its power because just because they've lost three or four times in all of their efforts to get rid of this law, they're not going to give up. Um, since the Unical case, we filed other cases against corporations and we've tried to expand the reach of this law, not just to include the most heinous human rights abuses like rape, torture, and killing, but also abuses against, for example, environmental defenders like Ken Sarawiwa who many of you might know um, challenged Shell and was tortured and executed for his nonviolent um, opposition to the environmental destruction of Agoni land in Nigeria. Um, we're also suing Chevron for torture and, and killing in Nigeria. And just last month, we filed another case, new case of its kind, and we'll have to watch to see whether this is successful because this is a different kind of case against Occidental Petroleum for death just like in Burma, people were killed, but this is death by toxic contamination and poisoning of the environment, um, which under international law, environmental contamination and environmental destruction is not considered a human rights abuse yet. And so it's not possible yet to bring this kind of environmental case under the, con under the umbrella of the environment of the Alien Tort Claims Act. So we have tried to use California law to control California corporations um, and assert the jurisdiction of their, again, their home court over this company regardless of where they go in the world. This idea that you can run but you cannot hide and, and our laws will control you. Um, clearly corporations have an enormous amount of power. There's economic globalization and the globalization of law and justice has not caught up. We cannot sue them and bring cases against them at the International Criminal Court or at the ICJ, but we can bring cases here. If there's anyone from other countries here in the audience, other countries need law like this as well. We need these kinds of laws in countries around the world that hold corporations accountable wherever they operate. Um, so in closing, I just want to say that not all lawyers are bad. <laughs> we can actually do some good things with the law. We have done some good things with the law and there's so much more to do. These are new phenomena that we're dealing with. The law has not ca caught up, but look at what happened. Just because something hasn't been done before doesn't mean that it can't be done and that it won't be done. Um, we need to protect the laws that we have that hold corporations accountable and create 
new laws, which means getting people to the court to raise their voices, tell their stories, and talk about what happened to them. Because storytelling as well as litigation is a form of justice. So talk to people if you're in the media, on the ground in these countries who are experiencing the firsthand impacts of corporate globalization. The decisions and the headquarters and all of the stuff that happens to make these projects occur happen in the United States, happen in Europe, happen at the global level, but the impacts happen at the local level to real people who suffer real harms. And the great thing about litigation is that in the end, it's their case, it's their story. So budding young lawyers, media people, citizens, there's something for all of us to do, regardless of where these abuses happen. And I'm really glad you're here and taking the first step to doing something. Thank you.